In class we were going through this uh, proof of a result that basically told us that uh, convergence and probability is a stronger notion than convergence and distribution. And so what that means for us is that um, if you know that a sequence converges in probability to a random variable, then that implies that that sequence converges in distribution to that random variable. And the proof uh, of this result is somewhat long and involved. There are lots of steps. So what I tried to do is break it up into uh, several different components. And two of them you've basically seen before, which we mentioned in class. So components one and three uh, you proved as a result uh, in homework number one. And we talked a little bit about it in, uh, in class. Now, results two and four are similar. And in class, I had you um, basically look at the entire proof and try to justify almost every step along the way. So, you know, I had these uh, numbers over different equalities and inequalities, and I asked you to come up with what each of the, you know, the, the justifications are. And I hope that was a helpful exercise. Part of the reason for that is because I want you to pick up this practice of uh, when you write down some step to, to try to justify uh, exactly why you're doing it. So the goal of this video is to do uh, part number four in this long proof about uh, convergence and probability being stronger. And part four is similar to part two, and so I figured it would be nice to have a video that sort of goes through each step in more of a fluid way than just seeing the proof and justifying each step. So uh, for this part four, we want to show that the CDF of the random variable x evaluated at x minus epsilon is less than or equal to the CDF for the sequence of random variables evaluated at x plus this probability statement that looks basically like the probability statement that shows up in convergence and probability. So what we'll do is we'll start out with the expression on the left hand side. So the CDF of x evaluated at x minus epsilon. Well using the law of total probability we know that that's equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to x minus epsilon uh, intersect with uh, xn is less than or equal to x plus the probability that x is less than or equal to x minus epsilon intersect the complement of the, the set we intersected with before, so xn greater than uh, x. So here, all that we did was use the law of total probability with a very particular um, partition. So a partition that will be helpful to us in subsequent steps. Now in class when we looked at the proof for property 2, uh, we basically used a theorem of probability that says that if you have the intersection of two uh, events or places where random variables live, that intersection, uh, the probability of that intersection will be less than or equal to the probability of either one of the, the uh, events. And so we're going to do that uh, step again in a strategic way, basically to get this probability here, basically to get this CDF of the sequence. Right? So we take this whole probability, the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to x minus epsilon, and the probability that x then is less than or equal to x, and just extract this probability out, and that would give us a less than or equal to probability of xn less than or equal to x. And then we'll keep the second term uh, exactly the same. So probability that x is less than or equal to x minus epsilon and xn greater than x. So this step we're using something like probability that a intersect b 
is less than or equal to the probability of A. And it's also true for the probability of B. So notice now that this thing here is just the CDF of the sequence. So really our goal now is to take this second term and try to do something to get it to look like the second term in the result. Well, it takes a little bit of algebra. Um, so, well actually I'll just write this now as the CDF of the sequence. And I think what we'll do here is first subtract off x from each uh, inequality, each side of each inequality. So we'll have the probability that x minus, again, the random variable x less than or equal to little x minus epsilon. So we've got to subtract off an x there too. And then uh, the other inequality will have the sequence minus x is greater than little x minus big X. And really the reason why we're doing that is because we do want the sequence minus the random variable x to show up somewhere, and we've got it showing up here now. So of course this first inequality can simplify because this is zero, right? X, the random variable x minus the random variable x is Technically, the random variable zero, um, but that's just a constant at zero. And that means we can rearrange this inequality to look like the following. So don't forget the first piece, which is the CDF of the sequence. And then we'll have plus the probability that little x minus the random variable x uh, is greater than or equal to epsilon and the probability that the sequence xn minus x uh, is greater than uh, x minus big X. So just some rearranging here in that first spot. Now think about what this line says. We have two different conditions. The first condition says that the difference between the sequence and the random variable is greater than little x minus the random variable x. And then this condition here says that little x minus the random variable x is uh, greater than or equal to epsilon. So we have this, you know, two statements about uh, an inequality greater than or equal to, and there's sort of a transitive property thing happening here. So if we thought about this as some a, we're saying that a is greater than b, and then b shows up here, b is greater than some c. So that means you know that a uh, is greater than c. So again, we can write this as uh, first the CDF of the sequence plus the probability that xn minus x is greater than or equal to epsilon. So um, the next thing that we can do is, well, if we have this relationship that the CDF of x evaluated at x minus epsilon is less than or equal to this, if we added on anything positive, this relationship would still hold, right? We'd still have something greater on the right-hand side. And so the idea here is to add on a strategic probability so it will be positive and the inequality still holds. And what we want to do is add on the probability such that when we add the probability that we have here with what we add on, we get this term up here in the, in the result. And what that means is we need to add on the probability xn minus x is less than or equal to uh, negative epsilon. And then those two together will give us the probability, the absolute value of xn minus x um, greater than or equal to epsilon. 
So the justification for the second to last step is we're adding a positive number. And then the last step is just um, basically using the definition or rewriting that uh, absolute value. Okay, so I think now we've proved the result here in number four. And in class, we put all of these results one through four together. And we put them together to show, again, that convergence in probability implies convergence in distribution.